Netcast you love from people you trust. This is Twit. Now, we've got the most complicated of the basics out of the way. It's time to put the pieces all together and show you what you can do with these redstone creations. First, uh, let me show off some things that you may build on uh, your server. Okay, so first we have this, this unassuming wall. It's just a wall. I'm sure nothing, nothing is weird with it. The fact that there is a lever in an item frame, it means nothing, nothing at all. Okay, so let's grab this lever. Um, this is a wall with a secret, as you can most likely tell. On this wall, uh, if I take this lever and put it on a block and flip it, nothing happens because there is only a single block in game that will accept this redstone current and voila, secret door. So just to show that off again, if I put this lever on any of these blocks, it won't do anything. You have to know the secret block, oops, or you can just be in creative mode and break the wall. Um, you have to know the secret block, which I believe is this one. Nope, I believe is this one. There we go. And now the door opens. How this works is it uses a, a Jeb door. Uh, so if you are wondering how this door creation works, it actually uses, I mean, just to, just to talk quickly about how weird some redstone can get, there are definitely bugs in redstone. It's, they're, you're never going to be free of all the redstone bugs. Um, so far, I've taught you that this would be a source block right here and that this would get auxiliary power from the source block. Unfortunately, with pistons, it doesn't work that way, and both pistons fire for reasons I don't understand. Um, and just to show off that this isn't true with other uh, scenarios, if I put this on top and switch that, only one will work. And it's not just like this area is weird. No, it's just pistons act weird. But anyway, that allows us to create a Jeb door, which is a, uh, a really compact way of making the door. So what I've done is I have inverted the signal whoop, so that when there is no um, lever on the, on the door, on the wall, it will power on and all of the pistons will fall into place. And then when we put a, I don't think it's on that one, I think it's there. There we go. When we put a lever on the wall in the correct place, then it unpowers and all of the pistons move out of the way. And this is also a good example of how timing works. Uh, first, when they become unpowered, the, uh, the first thing to update is this redstone right here, which retracts the pistons away from uh, this first layer of wall. That's these pistons right here. And then the pistons on the side have to pull them back. But we have a two tick delay so that the pistons can move all the way back out of the way. And then these side pistons can move them uh, away from, um, from the doorway and a person can walk through. So that is how this door works. Let's go ahead and keep it safe, keep it hidden. Okay, next, uh, the daylight detector is probably one of my favorite uh, things in game because I don't like carrying around a clock with me uh, and uh, having something that can detect the daylight and turn things on, on and off uh, automatically based off of the time of day in Minecraft is really, really useful. So if I ha use this command block to set the time to night, do do do, the lights turn on. And if I set the time to day, the lights turn off. Kind of a nice feature. Um, it sort of uh, keeps the area lit. And then also, it's just a really nice indicator of if it is nighttime without having to look through windows or say uh, if you have this in the basement of your house, in your sorting room, or whatever. Next, this is definitely one of my favorite things ever. Uh, this is a door, which I can't get through because it is iron. I can't just right click and, uh, and open. It needs to have a redstone current to open the door. And this is a passcode feature. So if I hit a button, you can, I can confirm that I hit it and, and it'll, uh, it'll open eventually. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just showing what someone else might do. Uh, the white button actually resets and the code for this is blue, yellow, and bam, the door opens. And then it resets itself and it's kind of a quick uh, open and close. So there we go. Uh, how this works is pretty ingenious. Um, over here, uh, we have redstone blocks. And if this line is being powered 
then you have the incorrect code. So uh, uh, you can see yellow and blue are the blocks with these raised uh, areas. So you need to push these redstone blocks down. But if you get the code incorrectly uh, by, let's say, uh, pushing any of, uh, say, let's say pushing this purple one down, then uh, the uh, block will be down here and it will continue to power the line, power the line which means that uh, it will not fire. Uh, this white one, uh, this white one right here will reset everything. And uh, what's cool is it doesn't have to be in a specific order, so it can be yellow, blue, and then the door opens. But if by accident you have, you know, you've hit green, it won't open. Uh, but once you hit green again, it will. Um, so uh, just kind of a neat little passcode. Next, this is an item sorting, sorter uh, using redstone as the back end and these item hoppers as uh, the front end. So uh, here we have some redstone, some more, more redstone, a little bit more redstone, and even more. we're a little bit redstone crazy here uh, on this episode. So if I take these, uh, these items, and let's throw a few in there, and a few in there, and a few over here, and let's just throw them all in. Um, well, this item sorter will place these blocks back where we found them. Redstone in here, the redstone blocks in here. I believe that this was the torch and this was the uh, repeater. Let's see if we've got any torches yet. We haven't. Um, uh, it uses uh, these item hopper uh, delay uh, uh, settings uh, where uh, as long as uh, this is powered, it's not gonna go through. And, uh, it's just a really, really neat system of, you know, now this hopper is the one that is sorting things out. Let's see how we have more. Okay, so it's working on the repeaters right now. Let me just move the torch to the front. And it should, yep, there you go. It flips into torch mode and does that. It's just a really, really neat uh, item sorter and uh, you can check that out. So this is uh, useful things that you may create in game. Now. Let me show you some of the crazy stuff that people make in Minecraft using ridiculous, I mean, unlimited resources and, and crazy stuff. So let me go ahead and join the server. So here we are. Uh, first, this looks to be, I've just been flying around. I haven't even been asking people. I'm, I'm just assuming uh, what a lot of these things are. This looks to be a passcode. Um, and what you do is you uh, input a code here on the front of this pad, and then it goes back and checks its memory to see if your code is correct. It looks like these are the memory cells right here. It's the, these torches uh, back here um, are what checks the memory, and then these lines that you're seeing at the bottom are uh, where it will send that signal to see if it is true or, or false. Um, really, really cool uh, sort of, you know, uh, digital pad. Now, then there's a lot of other creations kind of around in this area that I'm not incredibly sure what they do. Uh, they may be, uh, you know, th these may be working projects. This one over here, uh, it looks to be a computer of some type. Uh, there, it, most of these arrays are most likely uh, uh, memory cells. And down here you can see clock control and reset counter. I'm not going to hit any of these buttons because I'm very afraid that I would break it. Then you have some outputs right here to see uh, if these are powered. So uh, current instruction, and it will give uh, some sort of binary code to tell you, it looks like, and this, is, this is all speculation, and then you can reset the flags of the device. Um, very, very cool stuff. If we look down here in the details, we may be able to see, it looks like they're using pistons as their uh, memory um, holder, which is cool because you can reset it to whatever you want. Uh, it doesn't look like that uh, at all. It looks like this may just be all reset. Um, but, and then over here, uh, it look, I noticed, it looks like they're working on screens um, to, so each of these memory cells uh, would capture a single pixel on this screen, and so they're out there displaying, um, you know, pixel art on the screen by pushing out pistons that correspond with that pixel on the screen. Really, really, really cool stuff. 
Uh, here's another one over on, no, this isn't, uh, sorry, I've got uh, all mixed around. Um, but you can see that this stuff is literally coding, like hard coding, using early methods of AND gates and NOR gates and, and uh, logic matrices and, and memory cells to create binary structures inside of Minecraft um, that it can be pushed to the extreme and you can even create very, very complex things and sort of um, compact scenarios. So I just wanted to show off that, yes, it gets crazier from here. Thank you so much for watching this episode of OMG Craft. I hope that you've learned something. I hope that you have taken something away from it. And uh, congratulations for you for getting through all of Redstone. It is an accomplishment on your part. If you want to get future episodes of OMG Craft, you can do so by subscribing. Either search for OMG Craft in iTunes or subscribe via YouTube at youtube.com slash OMG Craft. Big thanks to Cheeto and Jeff Needles for helping out with this episode more than normal. And uh, I will see you guys on another episode of OMG Craft.